Okay, okay. Very good. Okay, so I believe everybody is in at this point. Um, so welcome everyone to the Crystal Ray Network College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event with us. We have some fantastic schools here today. Uh, my name is Chelsea. I'm going to be the facilitator. Uh, before we get started, a few housekeeping things. Um, as, you, uh, as we go through this, your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so please be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash crystal rick. So before we turn it over to our first presenter, uh, we'd like to show a quick video. to the first ever Cristo Rey Network Virtual College Fair. We congratulate you students and parents for taking the next step in preparing for college by attending today. We're so glad you're here. And we're glad Father John Foley is here as well. Thank you, Elizabeth. It's, it is indeed a, a privilege and, a, and a, a blessing to be able to collaborate in this um, first ever event for the Cristo Rey Network. The Greece Ray Network Schools. You know, all of us, all of us, students, um, teachers, parents, all of us were born with certain gifts, and all we go through life trying to make those gifts contribute even more to the world we live in. Uh, this world is our responsibility. God entrusted this world to us, and it's up to us to make the best of what God has given us. And that's what education is all about. It's about, it's about taking what the gifts that God has given us, the virtues that God has implanted in our souls, and making them as effective as they can be. So education is a way of making, making my contribution to the world even better. Thank you, Father Foley. So students, today your community surrounds you. With over 23,000 alumni nationwide, and 37 high schools in 24 states, currently 12,000 students, and 5,000 of those students are juniors and seniors, just like you. We're joined by 115 participating colleges. These colleges are ready to invest in your future. Some of these colleges have been partnering with us for over a decade. You'll have the opportunity, students and parents, to attend a financial aid 101 session offered in either English or in Spanish. If you don't attend every session, don't worry, it'll be available on YouTube, so you won't miss any. Don't forget about the Ask Me About session. This is your opportunity to ask any question you want and to leave confident that you came and feel empowered to start your college journey. We thank you all for your commitment to your future, classes of 2022 and 2023, and your parents and guardians students, college counselors, and college representatives. Thank you all for being here. Como una última palabra, le, bendi, le pedimos al Señor que bendiga a todos los que están envueltos en, esta, en este esfuerzo de, de familiarizarnos con, mejor con el mundo académico de la universidad. Que el Señor bendiga la buena voluntad y, los, y, los, eh, y lo, la, la, el deseo de todos de para mejorar este mundo y para mejorar la, las vidas de los que nos rodean. Que el Señor bendiga este gran familia Cristo Rey. Awesome. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Denison College. All right, thank you so much, Chelsea. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. All right. 
All right. And I think we should be all set. All right. So thank you so much again, Chelsea, for having us all. Uh, my name is Nick Radmer. I am an assistant director of admission here at Denison University, uh, which is located in Granville, Ohio. I'll talk more about the location in a bit. Uh, and I'm also an alum. So I've had the experience of being a Denison student, and I'm really excited to share a little bit more about what makes Denison so great with everyone today. Um, I know when you see a lot of presentations, I think a lot of like facts and figures can kind of start to blend together just a little bit. So I don't really want to dwell too much on those in this presentation. I'm just going to throw a lot of them on the screen right now at the very beginning. Uh, just a couple things I do want to point out. We are a four-year residential community. Uh, we're a private liberal arts school, but we're also a residential community where every student is living on campus all four years of undergrad. So you do get the experience of always being within walking distance of all of your friends, uh, which is definitely one of the things that I miss the most uh, about being a Denison student. And uh, we also have actually 56 academic majors. That number is just a little bit out of date. So a wide range of ways for you to actually uh, pursue your academic goals here at Denison. Uh, but what I really want to focus on are what we really think makes Denison stand out. And that boils down to three things. There are the relationships that students build, build here. There are the opportunities that they can take advantage of. And there are the outcomes that they can look forward to after they graduate. Um, but the first thing I want to do really quickly is just talk a little bit more about our location. So like I said, we're located in Granville, Ohio. We're right in the middle of the state. Um, it's a fairly small community, but I think when a lot of people think of small towns in rural Ohio, they tend to think of um, something much smaller than what we actually have. And what we have is this very New Englandy style village, a bunch of really, really great restaurants and coffee shops. Um, everything that you need out of a small college town is there. But what I really love about Grandel is the depth of the relationships that you can build with the people in the town. And the story I love telling people is that my junior year, I actually got stranded on campus during Thanksgiving break. And there was a family that I used to dog sit for that actually invited me down to, for Thanksgiving dinner. So that's the kind of relationship you can build with a smaller college town. But if you are interested in experiencing something a little bit bigger, we're also very closely located to the city of Columbus. And I think once again, Columbus is really surprising for people. Um, it is one of the fastest growing cities in the country right now. And there's all sorts of really great pro sports teams, a really great restaurant scene, a cool art scene, um, quite a few Fortune 500 companies that have their headquarters in Columbus. And I think we have a really great track record of actually launching our students into internships and career opportunities uh, in Columbus itself. So again, when I think uh, you're, if you're looking for something a bit, a bit busier, you have very easy access to the city as well. So I really think when it comes to location, you do get the best of both worlds at Denison, where you're living somewhere a little bit quieter, but you have, um, in, you're in close proximity to something much bigger. But I really want to dive into the things that we really think make Denison unique. And the first big things are going to be the relationships that students make. Uh, students will build relationships, very meaningful ones too, with their classmates, professors, staff members, the community around them, uh, just about everyone on campus. But the kind that we really want to emphasize are the relationships that students build with mentors here on campus. And I, I, when we talk about mentorship, we're really talking about someone who isn't necessarily going to hold your hand through the college process, but definitely someone who's going to be your, have your back every step of the way. These are people who are going to be writing you letters of recommendation. They're going to be easing you through the transition uh, from high school into college. They're going to be pointing you in the direction of all the right resources to take advantage of. Uh, so they're really people who are just going to advocate for you all four years uh, as an undergrad. And we really think that the, the students who find that they have a mentor while on campus have proven track records of success, both in college and beyond. And I know I said I didn't want to bore anybody with stats or figures or anything, but there's one that we really love, which is that Gallup did this nationwide survey of students, and they found that 22% of students could say that they'd found a mentor while a college student. But at Denison, that number is 92%. So relationships are absolutely critical to everything that we do here at Denison. But the next big thing to talk about are the academic opportunities that students can take advantage of being a liberal arts college. Hopefully the classes are going to be at the center of that. And like I said earlier, we have 56 different programs that students can choose from. They range from some of the more traditional programs that you'll find at many of our peer institutions, things like psychology, English, biology, uh, uh, 
all of that good stuff. But there's also quite a few programs that are a little bit more specific to Denison. We think it's kind of a more traditional program with some liberal arts spins to them. So for example, for students interested in business, we have a global commerce program that kind of combines a traditional business program with more international focus. Um, we have courses in health, exercise, and sports studies, in data analytics. This year, we just started a journalism program, which we're really excited about. And last year, we actually started a new global health program, which uh, we did not intend to be quite so timely, but it just sort of worked out that way. Um, so like I said, 56 different academic programs, students can create their own majors if they're interested. And in terms of the average class size, average class size is gonna be about 19 people. Um, the biggest class I ever had as a student had about 25 students and the smallest had six people. So once again, that's another way that we really do encourage students to build relationships and get to know the professors. It's by virtue of that smaller class size. But on top of that, we know that you know, academics aren't gonna be the only thing you take advantage of. We really hope you get involved with extracurricular opportunities on campus too. So for students interested in athletics, we have the Mitchell Center. This is a brand new space when I started back in 2014. Um, it has uh, really great facilities for whatever your sport is. We do have 24 varsity sports um, on campus. We're a division three school and about a third of our students do participate in some kind of sport while they're on campus. But that's on the north side of campus. Moving over to the south side, we also have a brand new performing arts center. So I think for students who are really interested in pursuing the performing arts but don't want that conservatory approach where you have to audition to keep your spot every single year, Denison's a really exciting place right now. And with that, we have the Michael D. Eisner Center. It's our newest academic building. It combines the departments of dance, music, and theater. They're now all under one roof. And we're really excited about all the possibilities and potential for collaboration going forward forward with this new space. And then the last big thing I want to talk about are the outcomes that students can look forward to after they graduate. So to help prepare you for life after Denison, we have the Knowlton Center, which is our career development office. And the Knowlton Center is staffed by a bunch of career counselors whose job it is to have their ear to the ground about potential internships that you might be interested in, uh, careers you might want to launch into, graduate programs or professional programs you may want to pursue. And they're going to help you prepare for that throughout your four years at Denison. So they're going to help you build your resume. They're going to help you work on your interview skills. If you do have an internship that you want to pursue, they'll be able to offer you funds to actually live in a new part of the country and uh, actually pursue that internship too. But they also host a bunch of little seminars throughout the year on some of those real world adult skills that you kind of wish you'd learned in high school. So things like how to buy a car without getting ripped off, how your health insurance works, all of that good stuff. Those are all services that you can take advantage of at the Knowlton Center too. And the last thing I'll point about point out about the Knowlton Center is that uh, all of the services they provide, students can keep coming back to them for the rest of their professional career after you graduate. So if you do need some extra support at some point down the road, the Knowlton Center will still be there for you. So this slide, you can just see some of the stats of how this is a, an approach to career development that has gotten results. Um, but the very last thing I want to talk about, I know I'm running up towards the end of my time, uh, just with the application process, uh, we have two different deadlines. One is on November 15th. That is our early decision deadline, wherein you are agreeing to come to Denison if you are admitted. And then our regular decision deadline is on January 15th. That's the option where you get to keep your options open and hear back from everybody before you make a decision. Um, we are a test optional school. I know many schools have kind of transitioned to being test optional in the past year, uh, but this is something we've been doing for about 15 years now. And finally, the very last thing I'll mention is that we are a full need institution, meaning that if you do decide to apply for financial aid, if there is any gap between what you can afford to pay for Denison and the total cost of attendance, we will match 100% of that through our financial aid program. But I've been speaking for about my nine minutes now, so i happy to turn it over to my next colleague, but thank you all so much for listening and for having us, and I hope to see you again on campus soon. Thanks so much. Thank you so, so much, Tennyson University. All right, next up, we are going to have Grinnell College. Take it away. Oh, sounds good. Let me get my presentation up real quick. Uh, there we go. So yeah, hey everyone, thanks so much for joining and speaking with us today. My name is Christian Morris. I'm a senior. Oh, she's in my 
earphones out. Ouch. I'm a senior admission counselor here at Grinnell College. I'm also a recent alum. I graduated in 2018 studying Spanish and education, and I'm excited to talk to you guys about Grinnell. And so Grinnell, a little bit about who we are. We are a small liberal arts college in Iowa, right in between Des Moines and Iowa City, about 45 minutes both directions, east and west. And then also about four hours driving from Chicago or Illinois, depending on where you are. It might be four or four and a half hours, um, but not a bad drive. And we have about 1,700 students on campus. And something that we really do pride ourselves on is our sense of diversity, which is directly reflected through our student body. And so within those 1,700 students, 25% of our students are domestic students of color, 20% are international students, 15% are first gen, and we are 94% out of state. Um, but as someone who's gone through the entire process of being a student here, I can promise you that with respect to interacting with others, it really does not matter what you are interested in academically, what you do in your free time, or what you do want to do professionally. Regardless of your interests or your pursuits, academically, professionally, or recreationally, um, you're bound to interact with people with a completely different cultural background, intellectual background, social background, and so on than yourself. Um, I found that to be completely and utterly unavoidable during my time here as a student, which I would really, really appreciate it, regardless of whether I was purposely isolating myself or actively poking my head into something new. Um, it was completely unavoidable. Um, moving on to some of our academics, our curriculum is a kind of rare, it's called the individually advised curriculum, and so what that means is that aside from your one required class that you have in your first year of your first semester, which is called tutorial, aside from that one class, the rest of your classes every single semester are all electives, outside, as long as it's outside of your major, and you have until the end of your second year to actually declare your major in the first place, which I think is really special. It kind of takes into account the fact that you may not know what you're good at or what you're most passionate about. And typically those two things are different things. They don't necessarily coincide. And so the essentially our curriculum allows for a lot of intellectual freedom and autonomy, but also gives our students the amount, a lot of time and resources to figure out how to intersect those possibly two different things academically and then professionally, which I really appreciated. You also get three advisors starting from your first year until the end of your fourth year. The first is your academic advisor, the second is your exploratory and career advisor, and the third is your residence life coordinator. But that one required class I mentioned earlier called tutorial is honestly exactly what it sounds like. Um, it's meant to give all of our incoming first year students an academic and a social foundation within the classroom setting that we offer before you get into more intense classes in, in your second semester, second year, third year, and fourth year with people who are very much so used to the rigor and routine of those classes. So this class gets you used to doing your own original research. It gets you used to writing multiple 79 page papers based on your own original research, citing it, which can be annoying because depending on the discipline that's in, it's gonna look different in the footnotes section. Um, and then presenting your work in front of one person or maybe 30 people before all of that is expected of you very regularly. And so that is essentially the whole point of tutorial to get you acclimated to the academic space that we offer here on campus. And with respect to off-campus study, uh, off-campus study is really special just because the only thing you need to do as a student is to, meet, is to meet the GPA requirement, which is a 2.75 at the very least to have the ability to go abroad. And then once you do meet the requirement, you have the ability to go abroad, regardless of your academic interest or major, depending on if you've declared already, because we have abroad programs in all departments and all disciplines. And we have well over 100 peer group programs on six different continents. But the thing that resonated with me was just that if you happen to go to London or Japan, where breathing, probably cost more money there than breathing in Iowa or anywhere in the world where breathing will cost more money there than breathing in Iowa. Uh, your financial impact is adjusted in response to that um, because it's our biggest nightmare for faculty, staff, or students to be anywhere in the world without enough resources to thrive there. So we're always aware of that change. And that's something that I really appreciate as someone who came from a low-income background. Uh, moving on to some research. Um, research is honestly, completely and utterly unavoidable as long as you're a student here at Grinnell. And that is because research is absolutely required in all of our departments and in all of our disciplines. Meaning if you wanna get an A in any of your classes, whether it's related to your major, whether you're taking it for fun, whether it's a 101 course or a high level 300 seminar course, regardless of where it is, you have to get the hands-on research aspect done in a decent manner because it's a large portion of your grade for the class. But that also means that it truly is unavoidable. It's in dance, theater, art, music, physics, Spanish, and so on. It's in everything that we offer from the top to the bottom. And a really popular research opportunity that a lot of our students take up is the Mentor Advanced Project. And that's essentially where students can work alongside professors on a personal professional project of the professors, get quality and legitimate research and job experience at the same time, get paid to do it depending on if it's during the year or during the summer with that stipend and get credits for it. But I think most importantly is that when you do complete this project, 
You present it in a professional environment on campus and off campus. And anytime you do this presentation off campus, you're almost always, if not always, the only undergraduate there at that conference doing that presentation, uh, which means that this entire experience is usually completely and utterly exclusive to the graduate level, uh, but we offered at the undergraduate level, which is pretty cool. Uh, moving on to some student life, um, just for a moment, there is a misconception out there that just because you're in Iowa, that means that there's absolutely nothing to do. And so we love to fight that misconception. So on campus every single year, we have well over 500 events that are all free of charge, all open door policy. This includes our varsity sports. This includes all of our guest lecturers, our concerts and more. And we have well over 100 student-led organizations and clubs. Um, we're a D3 institution with 20 varsity sports and a whole bunch more of intramural sports and activities to a lesser necessary to a lesser commitment level as a compared to a varsity sport. But something that I appreciated as a student here was just that for any and all activities on campus, there is little to no bar or cut to be involved in. And that even went for varsity sports, meaning we don't want you to think you have to have public speaking skills and some sort of experience in theater just to try out for theater. We don't want you to think you have to have played volleyball for middle school and high school just to try out for intramural volleyball or to play varsity volleyball. Uh, we want you to do things whether you're good at it or absolutely terrible, um, which I think is really cool um, because it means that you can get out of your comfort zone and truly try new things at your leisure. Um, but yeah, moving on to our careers, life, and service department. This department essentially houses the exploratory and career advisor, one of the three advisors all of our students get from day one. And so that means that the CLS department, careers, life, and service, they spearhead internships and externships. Um, externships are essentially alumni shadow programs where you stay with an alumni host whose profession is within your academic interest or major. So you can be out there in the world in front of what you think you like, because you've only seen in the classroom, but you're out there in front of the world in front of what you think you like. So two to four years in advance, you get an idea of what exists outside of the classroom and you have a better idea of what you want to double down on two to four years in advance of actually graduating and having to double down on some sort of opportunity. And when it comes to internships, the CLS department is amazing because they understand that they're barely paying at all, if paying at all, all the time. So if that's ever the issue for you, please apply for funding. We give over $400,000 every single summer alone in the summer with $400,000 as a bare minimum. So our students can get the quality experience that they've already earned for themselves anywhere in the world. Um, because finances tends to be the number one barrier after people earn those experiences wherever they are in the world. Um, whether it's a public transportation um, budget that you need or whether you're living in Taiwan working with one of our theater professors in their theater out there in Taiwan. Regardless of the scale of funding, please, please, please apply for funding. Um, when it, moving on to applying to Grinnell, um, we do have three deadlines. We have early decision one, early decision two, and regular decision, and we are test optional this year. And we take a holistic approach whenever we do look at the application, meaning we don't necessarily just care about how you've done academically. Since we have such a small and intimate community here, um, in all honesty, anyone can work really, really, really hard and get all A's, but not everyone would feel comfortable and at home here at Grinnell. So we really do care about how you actually exist here as a human being and not necessarily just about how you've done academically whenever we do look at the application. So please work on those extracurriculars or fill out the essay and work really hard on the essay because those are the main portions of the application where you as a human being come out and are displayed in that application. And we take a huge note to that. And lastly, with respect to financial aid, we are need blind and we meet 100% of demonstrated need. Um, within that demonstrated need packet that we give you, where we meet 100% of it, there are also no student loans within it. Um, that is a direct um, response to COVID and how that's affected um, all the families and actually everyone in the world, which I think is really awesome. Um, I wish they did it earlier because I have student loans. Uh, so I wish they did it earlier, but um, yeah, that's everything from me. And thanks so much for joining today. Awesome. Thank you so much, Gano College. All right, next I'm going to pass it off to. Bates College. Hey. Okay, first and foremost, uh, I definitely need to step up my uh, slide deck game. Uh, you guys have some amazing pictures, uh, but uh, folks, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, my name is Jared Rivers. I'm a senior associate dean and director of access in the Bates College admission office. Uh, Bates is a small college, a uh, small private liberal arts college that was founded way back in 1855 by abolitionists. Uh, so the same people who are fighting to abolish slavery in the Americas are the people who founded 
Bates College. So when you think of our college, that strong sense of inclusion should really be at the forefront of your mind. Uh, Bates was actually the first co-ed college in the New England region and the second co-ed college in the entire country. They were actively recruiting women and students of color when that was considered a radical thing to do. Um, community is often a word that you will hear uh, tossed around uh, on the Bates campus. 95% uh, of our students live on the Bates campus for all four years. By the way, uh, when I say we're a small college, we have about 1,800 undergraduates. They come from all 50 states in nearly 70 different countries from around the world. Of course, Bates, uh, the campus is located in Lewiston, Maine, uh, which has about uh, 35,000 full year residents. However, our twin city of Auburn has approximately another 25,000 full year residents, uh, which really makes that area of the state of Maine the second largest urban area for our state. Now, we only have about 1 million people total uh, and 50% of the state's population uh, resides in a 30 mile radius from where our campus is located. So for our state, uh, it's a pretty densely populated area. Um, there's, you, when you think of Lewiston and Auburn, it's almost like a huge outdoor classroom for our students. 50% of the courses have service learning components built into them. Uh, so you're gonna have your typical lectures, you're gonna have your typical classroom discussion-based courses, but you're also gonna have ample opportunity uh, to apply the things that you're learning in the classroom right there in the immediate area. The Harwood Center uh, is, is a, a department on campus that is completely devoted to setting up these partnerships such that uh, we have so many um, uh, opportunities as it relates to, to service learning uh, for our students. Um, now, our academic calendar is somewhat unique. We call it a 441. We ask that our students um, take four classes in the fall semester and take another four classes in the spring semester. Uh, and then we ask that they stick around for two out of the four years to complete what we call short term. A lot of uh, liberal arts colleges will have a short term, but in many cases, it's oftentimes sandwiched in between the two semesters. We simply tack us on at the end of the academic year, so a little bit different, unique there. Um, it's historically been a five-week term where you take just one course. Starting this year, we're trimming that down to a three-week term, again, where you'll take one course. So it's a full semester of coursework crammed into three and a half weeks. Um, and so it's pretty intense in that respect, uh, but very, very unique course offerings, which is what we're trying to capture with some of these pictures. Uh, many of which will go abroad as an entire class. I'm thinking of uh, theater courses that have gone off to London to study Shakespeare, environmental studies courses that have gone to uh, China, and then a lot of our science courses have gone to the Galapagos Islands. That fulfills one of your lab requirements uh, as a student at Bates. Uh, in terms of the academics, we have 37 majors, 26 minors, and uh, 75 different concentrations. Uh, the majors at Bates are typically 10 to 12 courses you'd be required to complete. Our minors are typically clusters of six courses, and then our concentrations are clusters of four courses. In many cases, the concentrations can lead to minors, and then in many other cases, the minors can lead to multiple majors. What's important to understand is that we're not admitting students to the academic programs uh, that, uh, that you mentioned on your applications. We admit students to Bates College. Once you're an admitted student, you can go in any direction you would like. And so you have a tremendous amount of academic freedom and flexibility to really shape your own academic pathway as a student at Bates. We do not have a core curriculum that every student completes. Rather, we have a series of general education requirements. Uh, it's typically about six or seven different gen ed requirements, uh, something that you can com almost complete in just one semester. Uh, we have a, a 10 to one student to faculty ratio. It's a very personalized undergraduate education. Uh, average class size is about 20 uh, students. Uh, research happens for every Bates uh, student. Uh, we are one of a handful of colleges that still requires our students to complete a senior thesis within their major in order to graduate. Uh, now we have very high graduation rates somewhere in that 90% range. 
uh, and we will provide you with a senior thesis advisor to help you get through that particular project. Uh, but this is something that goes right at the top of your resume. We're seeing wonderful things from our graduates. We have a 98% post-graduation placement rate within six months of graduating from the college. That is with 99% of our students reporting back to us. Uh, the past two years, we've had a 99 and 100% admit rate to law school for those students who completed our pre-law track. And then 75 to as high as 83% of our students who complete our pre-health track will gain admission to medical, dental, or vet school which is approximately 25% above the national average. But if you're really looking to do research, if you go to our homepage, Bates.edu, you'll find a little search bar in the upper right-hand corner. Punch in the phrase Mount David Summit. And that is like the Olympics or like the March Madness of research that is happening on our campus every single year. Research is offered out of every academic department and students can get started in their first years. Again, there are no graduate students at Bates. So the focus is really on undergraduate education. Um, now, I just shared that uh, we have a 98% post-graduation placement rate, um, but one of our president's initiatives is called purposeful work. It's not enough for her to know that you're gonna be highly employable and highly admissible to graduate and professional school. Uh, you know, The goal for Bates students is really to help you to gain uh, employment in those areas that will provide that meaning and that purpose in your life, right? So not just any job is going to do, right? Uh, and so I like to think of this work that I'm doing or this work that we're all doing here, uh, certainly the panelists uh, as, as our purposeful work. I certainly have been doing it for the past 20 years for institutions in that time. Um, and that I, you know, that I can come in and you know, chat with you for just a few minutes and be a part of this huge decision that you're about to make uh, really provides a lot of purpose in my life. And so again, that's really what we're aiming to do uh, with Bates graduates. Now, in terms of uh, the community at Bates, uh, again, 1800 undergraduates, they come from all 50 states and nearly 70 different countries, 28% self-identify as students of color, another 14% self-identify as first generation to college. We have over 100 different uh, student-run clubs and organizations. Um, you know, uh, we're an NCAA Division III uh, institution uh, that is located in the NESCAC, that is the New England Small College Athletic Conference. Uh, and so there's uh, a lot of opportunity there to sort of uh, maintain that competitive edge while you pursue a world-class education. Uh, and if it's not athletics, again, the arts are alive and well uh, at Bates. Uh, and again, we have lots of different clubs and organizations that you can get involved with. Uh, in terms of um, the admission process, Bates was one of the first to go completely test optional, something that we've been doing for the past 40 years. Only 40% of every incoming class submits test scores prior to receiving their admit decisions. So that is the vast majority of students on our campus are, uh, were non-submitters. We're not gonna penalize you in any way, shape, form, or fashion. We meet 100% of financial need in terms of financial aid and the average student indebtedness after being on financial aid for all four years is just under $13,000. So with that said, I will stop sharing and I will pass it on uh, to my colleague. Awesome, thank you so much Bates College. All righty, and next is DePaul University. Thank you everyone. Good evening and hello from DePaul University. I'm Ben Hatchett. I'm going to be your guide for the next nine minutes of all things DePaul. All right, to dive in, let's get started. What you're looking at on your screen at the moment is a picturesque East College. This is really the center piece of DePaul University. You can see the town square of Greencastle on the horizon, but we are a small private liberal arts college located in Greencastle, Indiana just outside of the metropolitan area of Indianapolis. So really in the heart of the Midwest, right in the middle of the state and in central Indiana. At DePaul, we have close to 1,700 students that make up our overall student body. We are entirely undergraduate, but have two schools. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about this college experience. There's a lot of things that we are proud about, but I want to start off by showcasing a few notable statistics and, and rankings that we have been recognized as um, receiving. We have, we've been the number one liberal arts college in the state of Indiana 
for a little while now and have a nationally ranked study abroad program. Not only is our program nationally ranked as, as the number third in the nation, but close to 70% of our overall student body will complete some form of study abroad experience by the time they graduate. The majority of our students are doing that as early as the second semester of their sophomore year, but many are going off in their junior year finding a meaningful off-campus experience before graduation. We are a top 50 nationally liberal arts college, and I'll let your eyes kind of take a look at some of the other uh, statistics here on this slide. But I myself am a graduate, and what I loved about DePaul is, of course, that liberal arts education. And I appreciate those of you joining us tonight and learning a little more, little bit more about your future college. It looks like no one has left the room yet, so I'm happy to hear that you're excited about this idea of going to school or learning more about different colleges to help your students or learn more. Um, really, at DePaul, you're looking at two great examples of our schools here. We have our College of Liberal Arts where about 1,600 of our students do reside. And then we have our smaller but mighty cohort each year in our School of Music. There is no real divide in our two schools. This makes up DePaul University. On the left side of your screen, you can see a quick little overview of the College of Liberal Arts, which does include 49 different majors, 56 minors to choose from. This is an ever-expanding list. If we were to have met each other virtually a couple years ago, you wouldn't have found uh, neuroscience or global health to name a few programs on our wide list of majors. The reason I bring these examples up is you can actually create your own major at a place like DePaul. An independent interdisciplinary major is very doable and you'd be surprised and you might not, you might realize by the end of your four years that you've helped influence our curriculum and have created a program that matches what you're looking for. Economics, communication, computer science continue to be some of our really well-established and successful programs, not just in terms of faculty, but overall popularity. We have liberal arts and sciences alive and well across our communities. All of our students will be diving into the liberal arts curriculum, but by March of your sophomore year, our students will be officially declaring their major. We have found that over the years that our students really do come truly undecided, undeclared. You might think one thing, we have found that 75% of our incoming Tigers at DePaul end up majoring in something other than what you could applied with to the university. Quick little fun fact, we did some digging over the summer at our own statistics and realized that kind of what we thought most of our students get here and figure out what your passions are and what you might want to study. If any of you are thinking of continuing on in music and maybe figuring out do you audition in our audition-based school of music or maybe music has been a big part of the last few years in your education, maybe even longer than just your high school career, most likely. We have created tons of symphonic groups and music performance opportunities within our College of Liberal Arts, or you can be a full-time musician in our School of Music in one of our four different degree programs. But know that if you're somewhere in between and maybe undecided if that full four-year education in music is not right for you, you can continue to be a vocalist or an instrumentalist at DePaul within our College of Liberal Arts. Taking a step further into your college search, I wanna explain a little bit of what's what we believe is unique about DePaul. And of course, like many liberal arts colleges, you're gonna have close knit community. And that's what this education is all about. You are certainly going to have faculty one-on-one -on -one attention. Um, but what I think what's different about DePaul is there might be something in the water, we don't know yet, but the faculty here truly are, are there to help you. Um, you never know when that one conversation might lead into a off-campus experience. I remember when I was a student at DePaul, I was a classics minor amongst many other things, but I had a, quickly had a professor that took an interest in me and recommended me to check out a program in Greece that I ended up loving during my four years at DePaul. But without my story, you know, putting my story to the side, access is big at DePaul. Not only are you getting access to your professors, but in turn, you're getting access to research internships, that global learning is a huge component of your four years at DePaul. I, I emphasized earlier the focus on study abroad, but for us, we require at least two extended studies experiences by the time you graduate. So in a way, we are requiring an internship or an off-campus study experience. We also want you to be the best version of yourself. And at DePaul, we have this commitment to not only be stewards of the liberal arts, but be creating leaders that the world needs for not only this you know, year that you graduate from, 
but what that world, what that landscape look like, looks like for years to come. So we understand that there are many different forms of leadership that the world needs, and we believe that that's something that you're going to be experiencing just by getting involved in our community, but taking classes that are teaching you critical thinking, problem-solving skills, that you'll be able to solve those problems that we haven't foreseen yet. Here are just kind of a few statistics that we're also proud of and why we believe that this experience matters to you and kind of your future college search and that eventual decision later on down the road. To start off, I'm just kind of pointing out a few things that, that we're proud of, and I'll let you all kind of look through the statistics here on your screen. But having a 97% 90 placement rate within six months of graduation is huge. Um, we are incredibly proud of that, and that's been something that we've been sitting at for a while. We, of course, are committed to closing that 3% margin to make sure all DePaul Tigers have their plans set up after college. But I think that's pretty unique. We're also proud of our 84% four-year graduation rate especially in comparison to the national average. And about 84% of our students will at least complete some type of internship by the time they graduate. I'll let you all kind of look through others, but please know this is that type of an environment where you'll be supported. But also while we would love to see you stay, we believe that you should truly graduate in four years and go off and do that next great thing after your time as a DePaul Tiger. If you're still not convinced and want to learn a little bit more, while the, the information from the class of 2021 is still finding us. The class of 2020 sent, was entering the workforce and is off doing some pretty great things, both at the graduate level, as well as a, a quick snapshot of some notable employers. At DePaul, we really do believe in that mentorship. Our alumni network is around 30, 37,000 active graduates and growing. Um, it's an amazing and vibrant network that really is there to help you. That was something that really attracted my eye, not only just as a current student to DePaul, but I remember the moment I applied and eventually was admitted, I felt like DePaul graduates were climbing out of the woodwork and were so excited for me. And it, uh, I felt like all of a sudden I met all these friends I didn't know were possible. Final moments here, I wanna walk through the application process. We are exclusive on the common application and it's a free application. If you're a senior joining us, these are live and open and ready to go. Um, we are continuing uh, for several years now, remaining a test optional university. So what we instead look at when we review your application is, of course, your transcript, your overall involvement, especially that curriculum. We love to see visitors and showing your involvement and interest tonight is one way to show that affinity. But we can't wait to dive into your entire application, especially looking at your writing statement and looking at the activities, what you're involved in and what you're passionate about back in your community. And my final few seconds here. I want to leave you with not just what I think DePaul Tigers are, but we actually did a quick poll over the summer, engaged faculty and staff of some adjectives that they think our DePaul Tigers represent. Thank you all so much for your time, and I hope to see you again either virtually or on campus. DePaul University is open for visits, so I encourage you to check out a time that works for your schedule or join us for a preview day or a fall Friday this, uh, this fall. Thank you all. Awesome. Thank you so, so much to Paul University. All right, I'm going to now share my screen. Um, we are just about ready to wrap up here. Um, so thank you so, so much, everyone, for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five-minute survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back the schedule and sign up for more sessions. Uh, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other sessions recordings at strivescan.com slash Christo Ray. Thank you so much. And thank you to our, all of our uh, guest speakers. It was very nice hearing from all of you. Have a great evening.